In this video, we're going to talk about constructing parametric coordinates for lines and planes, so coordinates that rely on parameters. Before, we've seen equations, and those can be used to encode lines, but now we actually want something a little more hands-on. So for R2, we can represent a line as the solution set to the equation ax1 plus bx2 is equal to c. I'm sure we can do that. And we've been doing that. That's great. And this, this encodes a line and we can use the linear implicit function theorem to get an implicit function for the line, so I can pick an endogenous variable, x is, x1 as my endogenous variable, as long as a is not equal to zero, uh, or x2 is my endogenous variable if b is not equal to zero. But sometimes it's more useful to have a, a representation of the following form. So I've got my vector x as a function of t, right? So I can get when I apply the linear implicit function theorem, I get x1 is a function of x2, or x2 is a function of x1. But here, I've got some new parameter that I'm introducing, this t parameter. And it's equal to some x0 vector plus t times some v. And, and what's the picture? Well, we've got two dimensions. And we've got a line. X naught is any point on that line. So X naught could have been any point on this line. I'm going to call this X naught. And then T is some parameter. So V is some vector. Let's say this is V. This is V. So this number would be X naught. So this, this quantity here will be x0 plus t being 1 times v. Uh, and let's say I wanted to add any other multiple of v. Well, then I would get vectors still all along this line, basically moving in the direction of the arrow of v. So we just use the tip to tail method to encode a line using a par parametric formula. Well, this works uh, in a general Euclidean space. This kind of this kind of idea, and that's that's kind of the nice thing about it, and uh, it's nice to have this kind of representation every once in a while. Uh, so let's make a quick definition. We say that L of x, y is the line segment, is the set of all one minus t x's plus t y's whenever zero is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to one. Right, so this this thing, this line segment, this is useful. It's gonna encode everything in between these two vectors. So this is our x vector. So say this was the origin, and this is our my y vector. And this line is everything in between here. That's great. Now, how about a plane? How do we represent a plane? Right, we can represent a, a, a line parametrically just by using this equation. And that's an arbitrary dimension. But how do we represent a plane? Well, if u is not a multiple, a scalar multiple of v, then we may also then we may write now x of s comma t where s and t are two parameters equal to x naught so I fix one point on the plane and then I add s u's and t v's that's it and this 
This encodes the fact that there are exactly two degrees of freedom roughly on a plane, just like the, the other one only had one parameter encoded there being only one degree of freedom. And the picture is very similar. So in three dimensions, we have our plane. We have some x naught, And then u might go off in this direction, and v might go off in this direction. And we can just take linear combinations, right? Scalar, scalar multiples and add them together to this x naught to give me everything on this plane, right? So this, this plane actually stretches on to infinite infinity. Uh, there's another way to represent this in kind of a parametric way uh, using what's called barycentric coordinates. So if P, Q, and R are in any n-dimensional space, uh, then we can also say that X of S T, so I've got three points and that encodes a plane, is equal to 1 minus S minus T P plus S Q plus uh, T R. And I can also say that this is say T1 P plus T2 Q plus T3 R. And these guys all together, these are the barycentric coordinates. So I have a, they have a different representation here. And this, this idea, I've got two parameters here. Well, well, I can have as many vectors as I want and as many parameters as I want. And when that happens, we call those hyperplanes. And so we can do this for, for hyperplanes, any, any, any kind of thing we would like. And we can also get barycentric coordinates for hyperplanes as well.